May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and in honor of that, we're dedicating the next four episodes to different treatments for depression, a major mental health issue across the globe. We'll cover medications, approved and unapproved, but we're kicking things off with an evidence-based non-pharmacological treatment, cognitive behavioral therapy. That's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, is a psychological treatment that focuses on the ideas that psychological struggles, like depression, are partially based on unhelpful ways of thinking and learn patterns of unhelpful behavior. It aims to teach coping strategies by helping people recognize and reevaluate unhelpful thinking patterns, to better understand other people's behaviors and motivations, and uses various strategies to help change unhelpful behavioral patterns. CBT is one of the most commonly used forms of therapy and also one of the most studied. We even have fMRI data to suggest that it modifies neural circuits and activity in the brain. But what does all that mean? Do these changes translate to anything meaningful? To the research. A 2012 review of CBT meta-analyses reported that the evidence strongly supported the effectiveness of CBT in treating anxiety disorders, somatoform disorders, bulimia, anger control issues, and general stress. But we're focusing this episode on depression, so what did it have to say about that? When compared to non-active control groups, meaning those that were on a waiting list for treatment or that received no treatment, CBT was definitely effective at treating depression. But what about active control groups, meaning those that received some other type of psychological treatment? This is the stronger control, and the story isn't quite as clear here. Some studies report no difference between the effect of CBT and other therapies, including psychodynamic treatment, problem-solving therapy, and interpersonal psychotherapy. For example, a 2013 randomized controlled trial reported no difference in depression outcomes between a group receiving CBT and a group receiving psychodynamic treatment, which is a form of talk therapy. So that doesn't mean CBT wasn't effective, it just wasn't any better than comparison treatments. However, other studies report that CBT was significantly better for depression treatment than other options, including psychodynamic therapy and relaxation techniques. One study reported that while CBT and interpersonal psychotherapy were equally effective at treating depression, CBT was superior in cases of severe depression. And going back to the 2012 review, some studies indicated that the effects of CBT were similar to the effects of medication for depression, while other studies suggest that medication and CBT in combination leads to the greatest effect overall. So if the data are so mixed, why is CBT such a front runner in the world of therapy? A 2018 commentary in the journal Frontiers in Psychiatry argues that while CBT is not the best standard we can have, it's the best standard we do have at the moment. The commentary's support is largely based on the fact that CBT is the most highly researched therapy, meaning it has the largest evidence base, and that it is a progressive research program, meaning it evolves based on new evidence. We like all that especially because we know that not everyone responds to CBT, so continually evolving it is always a good thing. We're also hoping to see more trials to better understand the efficacy of other therapies, and more work to understand the mechanisms behind all of them so that we can continually improve our options for treating depression. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, you might enjoy this previous episode on cancer and low sugar diets. We'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and like the video below, and head on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help make the show bigger and better. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillaholm, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.